Welcome to the Fast Lane Truck, and to my right, I have the brand new Chevy Silverado High Country, and to my left, that is the GMC Sierra Denali, and they're both the 6.2 liter V8 Corvette inspired source, whatever you want to call it, engine. And today we're going to do a very special review. I got to ride along with one of my favorite riders, Tony Swan. You may know him from Car and Driver and a bunch of other publications as we test drove the Denali. Check out this review coming up next on the Fast Lane Truck where we drive through the beautiful surroundings of Austin, Texas. So I'm behind the wheel of the brand new Sierra Denali, the one with the 6.2 liter V8 that puts out 420 horsepower and 460 pound foot of torque. And behind me is the man who knows all about this truck, Ken Bukowski. He's with uh, Sierra, actually you're with uh, GMC. And here is legendary rider Tony Swan. Tony, I am so happy to be with you. I have read you in Car and Driver forever. That's so, right. I know when you were a little boy and no, I just no, no. love hearing this stuff. No, no, no. Not when I'm a little boy. I, <laughs> I specifically was not going to say that. <laughs> but Tony has been um, in this industry forever and he is a legend, I think, among automotive riders. So it's a real pleasure to be in a pickup in America. <laughs> <laughs> driving well, a Chevy or and of course let's not forget a legend is uh, something you can either believe or not believe uh, <laughs> at your discretion a pleasure nevertheless a pleasure nevertheless and uh, we're here uh, in the heart of pickup country America right outside of Austin Texas because did you know that one out of four pickups are sold in the great state of Texas so I suspect that's why you guys chose this to that's why. Yeah. That's why, and they're the deer right there. And yeah. it's, it's yeah. a huge population of the uh, of deer. Uh, uh, of percentage deer. of the, uh, well, the deer, you know, we eat them. <laughs> but pickups are a huge percentage of the uh, vehicle uh, mix here in Texas, of course. Yes, yeah. they are. Obviously a big part of the culture down here. Yeah, so. you, you, it's the family truckster, it's the work vehicle, it's uh, the go out on a date vehicle. I mean, this is pretty much the vehicle of choice for you Texans, as you, I'm sure you know. Not all of you, but a lot of you. And uh, it's really interesting driving this new GM pickup because we were just talking about this. Unlike the previous ones, whenever I drove a pickup, there was a sense that the front end was doing something different from the back end, right? You were steering the Queen Mary in the back. Well, you didn't have really a, a sense for what was going on back there. There were wheels back there, but it never felt like it was the same vehicle. And this, to me, feels like it's one vehicle. That's not saying it feels like a sports car. Obviously, it's high up, it's got a lot of weight behind it, and it's got a lot of power with the new 6.2. A little bit of roar, too. And a little bit of roar, but roar. you know, taking these corners is not something you'd want to do at a, well, a high rate of speed just because this truck is built to tow, it's built as a work vehicle, it's not built to carve corners. Having said that, though, it is much more responsive and it is much more car-like than any of the previous generations, and especially the interior. Um, GM has really stepped it up with a much nicer interior. Everything feels high quality. There's no hard plastics for the most part. Um, and I was just talking about this. I think that pretty much any creature comfort you can find in like a 7 Series BMW, and that includes heated and cooled seats. Uh, I don't know, what else? What else is there that, that's here that... that, that, that the say driver alert package, the forward collision alert, lane departure warning technology. That's why the he. That's why he's the Intel link. <laughs> that's why he's <laughs> he's the GMC guy, and I'm not. Anything you could probably get in a high end yeah. vehicle, you can get in a pickup now. And um, the one thing that jumps out immediately is, well, let me be quiet. 
See what I mean? It's so quiet. And that's because you guys switched the door seals, right? We did. Changed, we changed the door design. So it's an inlay door design, we call it. It's set into the side of the body instead of going over the roof line. So that minimizes the wind noise. And triple door seals, as you were just about to say, all the way around. And, and actually, that's a bigger deal than you think. Because out there, you're probably thinking, so what? They you know slap down some door seals. But no, you have to actually change the way that the truck is constructed. You Absolutely. have to change the entire process of building this thing to do that and it's very expensive and um, you were saying that they made that decision during kind of the deepest darkest death days of yep. GM when yep. we weren't sure there was going to be a GM. It was, that's right, and it was the right decision too. I mean, you, you hear the results of the decision, or you don't hear it I should say. Now in case you're wondering, both of these trucks, the Sierra and the Silverado are almost identical from a ride and handling point of view. Engine wise, same engine. The biggest difference is there's this LED strip right there on the Sierra Denali. And of course, what we say about the Sierra, you can also say about the Silverado. So Ken, what do you think about this uh, transition that we uh, actually discussed earlier from having a V8 rumble be part of the whole uh, pickup experience, and this is a much quieter truck? Yeah, I, are you wondering if some people are going to be find it a little disconcerting that they don't hear the rumble as much? Are we talking about a different kind of uh, market, uh, market character now versus... Uh, when I was a lad? Yeah, great yeah, question. Yeah, I think so. I think people have much higher expectations about what they want out of a truck. I mean, trucks always got to be capable. They always have been. So that, that's kind of price of entry, and we deliver on that. But it's, it's um, for lack of a better term, the civility, the ride quality, the, the seat comfort, the quiet. Uh, if you're going to invest in a crew cab pickup truck, you're going to spend a decent amount of money. And if it's going to be your everyday driver, and you're going to put your family in it and the kids and, and go on a vacation and hit the highway, it's, it's got to deliver for you. I so mean, people so, aren't going to compromise on that stuff. So what is your average transaction price? What's the average that somebody's going to pay for a Denali? Uh, for a Denali? Yeah, which um, is what we're in. So It's going to be in the low 50s. It depends on the drive type. The two-wheel drive starts at 48 MSRP, and the four-wheel drive starts at 51. And this one, I think, is about 55. I mean, it's Yeah, a, it's, a, it's got a couple of the options. There's a, just a small handful of options anymore. The sunroof is an option, and the rear seat entertainment. <laughs> All right, how about, how about the average GMC pickup transaction point? The average transaction point for a light duty yeah. is getting near 40, and that's driven by the fact that the majority of trucks are four-wheel drive crew cabs nowadays. Yeah, that's it, a lot of money. It is, and like I say, with that lot of money that folks want to give us, they have high expectations. They want a high level of features and a good overall experience. So the, the bar is raised in terms of the customer expectation for a truck, for sure. So let's floor it. So that is very powerful, and that is very muted, right? You don't get mm -hmm. that kind of classic yeah. rumble that you would normally get out of a, a V8, especially one that is basically derived from the Corvette engine. Right, but you can feel it, though, right? You can feel it, yeah. yeah. Yep. But, you know, with great power comes great thirst, and you guys have not put out the EPA numbers, and I'm looking right now, average fuel economy on this loop, and this is, of course, in the mountains, well, hills of... We're in the hills. Yep. In the hills, and, you know, we've been kind of flogging it. Well, Tony... <laughs> Tony, wait, don't pin it on Tony. You call that flogging? I'll show you flogging. All right, yeah, it's been flogging. But the number I'm looking at is 12.9, you know, which is... Um, We've been driving it hard, though, I think. Going uphill a little bit. It what does, you just did was driving it pretty hard. Yeah, it does have um, this kind of seamless cylinder deactivation. Yep. So sometimes you're running in uh, V4 and sometimes running in V8 mode. And I think that's another surprise that you really can't tell. For those of you who remember the old GM products, remember the old Cadillacs that went V... V8, eight, four, four, V8, six, 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 yeah. V8. Those things were pretty obnoxious in, in their ability to, to, to deactivate cylinders. Here, you can't tell. I cannot tell if I'm really in four or eight cylinder mode. Obviously, when you're towing or when you're, you know, foot to the metal, then you're, then you're in the much, 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 much more fuel uh, thirsty V8 mode. But when you're just tooling around like we are, you can't yeah. tell the difference. That transition is seamless. So, can the... Uh the Dodge people, or well, now it's the Ram people, in their pickup truck uh, a couple, three years ago, uh, went to an independent rear, rear suspension. And they've had some success with it in terms of ride quality. Mm -hmm. But the ride quality in your truck seems quite good, so uh, you're happy uh, to continue with the live axle? Yes, we're happy with the leaf springs in the back. We think, like you said, the ride quality's kind of been pretty good in our trucks. In the last generation, we, we think we did a, a few things to make it even better. Uh, but we didn't compromise on any of the capability, the payload of the trailer, and we didn't want to do that. That's a good question. And of course, Ram has also gone to air suspension in the light duty. So they've really upped their game. 
you guys have upped your game in terms of engine, in terms of the interior. Um, do you see going down that road more um, air suspension, maybe even a diesel? I think you're going to see continuous innovation mm. in powertrain, and not just out of us, probably out of everybody. Uh, there's, there's more stringent fuel economy standards coming, so everybody's got to start figuring out how they're going to do that. Okay, our, our strategy is we're going to have a, a three-truck strategy when our canyon gets here. We're going to have something for a mid-sized buyer all the way through a half ton. And if you've got a big trailering need, we've got heavy duty. And nobody else is going to offer that range of capabilities and fuel economy and features. In the, the, range of, the range expansion will be a function of the mid-sized truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it, there's a wide range of needs in a pickup, obviously. Some folks want something that's easier to maneuver. It's good fuel economy, but it can pull a trailer and haul something in the bed when they need it to. So there's a mid-sized truck buyer, potentially. Who, wa who wants more than they get in today's mid-sized trucks, actually? And talking about towing, this particular one, the way it's configured, 9,500. Yeah. But, but if you get the one, you know, the short bed with... With the max trailering package on it? Yeah, what's that? Uh, with the 6.2, it's rated up to 12,000 pounds. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if you get above 10,000, I think you're probably in heavy-duty uh, territory. Because it's you know let's face it most people don't weigh what they're towing right you kind of eyeball it and you say that yeah, looks like do. five thousand pounds all right and slap do. it on and so it's easy to overload the pickups right it is and yeah. most of what folks tow with a half ton truck in general is five six thousand pounds or something yeah or less so it the five three meets a wide variety of needs do you, you like find that more. most people that are buying full size pickup trucks uh, at least in your uh, experience. Uh, will do some towing at some point? Uh, they do, but I'll tell you what, it's probably maybe a quarter or just a little less than a quarter that don't tow or don't tow, but once a month, once every other month. Yeah. So if they're putting a boat in in the spring at the marina and taking it out in the fall and maybe doing miscellaneous and sundry things in between, that might be it. Turn left at this For a lot of folks. Yeah, we're left here. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, I think this was very instructive and uh, certainly very informative. So on the TFL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, I don't know. I only got to drive the truck for maybe half hour, 18, 20 miles, something like that. And that's just not fair to the manufacturer or to the truck to do a complete rating. So you'll have to come back when we get the new 6.2 liter V8 in Colorado for hopefully the Ike Gauntlet and a complete Fastlane truck review. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fastlane truck. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Remember, cars are for wussies. That's right, even though I drive them. These things are cool. Chevy, Ford, and Ram, the three best-selling pickups in America. And thanks to GM who flew me out here and who hooked these up to a just under 5,000 pound trailer, we've got all three of them with the V8s. So let's take them on the road and see which one is the towing road champ. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Truck.